Hello everyone and welcome! In this video I'm going to be explaining downforce. Now if you haven't already watched my videos on uh, aerodynamic drag as well as my video on spoilers and rear wings, you may want to check those out before watching this, uh, kind of get some good background information for it. But basically what is downforce? Well downforce is a force pressing down on the car and the goal of it is to allow you to corner faster. So how do you do that? Well if you have an increased vertical force on your tires, those tires will have an increased uh, frictional limit in, in which they can hold a car going around a corner. So you may hear in car reviews something called skid pad test on how many G's a car can hold. So if you have a car going around, the frictional limit basically dictates uh, how many G's this car can hold. So, you know, something kind of decent would be like 0.9 G's that a car could hold going around a corner. Now in order to increase that, you can either have stickier tires or you can increase uh, the vertical force on that car. So, uh, what is downforce? Well, when we have a car traveling through the on the ground here, we've got the air passing over it, um, we've got this ridiculous plate that I put on top of it, and so basically this air is going to hit this slanted plate, and as it hits that slanted plate, it's going to apply a force in the backward direction and also in the uh, vertical direction because it's at a slant. So this vertical component is downforce. That's what we're talking about in this video, and then uh, in the previous video I had created on uh, drag, so that's that force on the horizontal plane. And basically what you want to do is maximize the downforce uh, with minimal amount of drag. So you've probably seen this equation before, um, especially if you've watched my video on uh, traction circles, which you may want to watch. Um, so basically we're looking at uh, the frictional force of the tires on the ground. So the frictional force that this vehicle can hold is equivalent to uh, the coefficient of friction of the tires with the ground multiplied by the normal force on the car. Now the normal force on the car is equivalent to the car's weight plus the amount of downforce it has. So, uh, just taking an example, let's say we have a coefficient of friction of 1, um, you know, it's going to be typically anywhere from about 0.8 to 1 uh, for modern tires. Uh, we're going to have a car that weighs 1,000 pounds, and we're going to have 1,000 pounds of downforce. Now, 1,000 pounds of downforce, that's going to mean you're going to be at a pretty high speed uh, as downforce increases exponentially with speed. So, the total frictional force that this car can withhold is 2,000 pounds. Now, how many Gs can this car hold when going around a corner? That's something that's kind of used within the industry to compare, compare different vehicles to one another. So, we know that force equals mass times acceleration. So, we can say that acceleration equals force divided by mass. So, we've got a 2,000 pound frictional force that the car is capable of withholding, and it weighs 1,000 pounds. So, we take the 2,000 pound force divided by 1,000 pound mass, and that gives us 2 Gs. So if this were the case, if you had a car that created this much downforce, uh, on the skid pad test, you would see that it would be able to hold 2 Gs. Now, for F1 cars, something that kind of taking this to the extreme, something that has the most uh, amount of downforce out there, these cars actually create about 3 to 4 times their vehicle weight when they're at high speeds, around 200 miles per hour or kind of close to there. So, when creating these high speeds, 3 to 4 times the car's weight, that means they can take corners at 4 to 5 Gs which is pretty incredible. Um, it's definitely not something any road cars can do. So, uh, you may have heard uh, people saying like, oh, F1 cars, they can drive upside down. And it actually is true if they were traveling fast enough. So think about it, if the car is creating three to four Gs, uh, pressing down in downforce, and it was upside down, so that's gonna be three to four Gs pushing it up, uh, and then it's gonna have one G, the, the weight of the car, pulling it down. So you're gonna still have two to three Gs keeping that uh, vehicle glued to the ceiling or the track or the upside down track that it's traveling on. So it would actually still be able to corner at pretty good speeds, uh, much better than even road cars uh, that exist out there today. So that's a basic overview of downforce. Um, basically, what you want to do again is maximize downforce and minimize the amount of drag you have. Now a common question might be, does downforce affect acceleration? And the answer is yes and no. Um, a lot of people will say, okay, if you have downforce that means you have a heavier car, and you're not changing the weight of the car. The mass of the car stays the same. So when you look at the equation, force equals mass times acceleration, and then you say the acceleration of the vehicle equals force divided by mass. Well, the mass of the car is remaining the same. So theoretically, with an increase in downforce, you're not going to change the acceleration of the vehicle. Now, why did I say, well, yes, you will change the acceleration of the vehicle? Well, because of drag. 
So with downforce, the uh, downside is you're going to have some drag. So that drag is going to mean you're going to need more uh, horsepower in order to accelerate at the same rate. So that drag is going to reduce your acceleration once you get to certain speeds. That's why I was saying, once again, maximize downforce, minimize drag. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.